10 Steps to Starting Keto So you've made the decision to give a keto diet a real try, and you're wondering how to get started, preferably the easy way without too much pain, sacrifice, and stress. You're in the right place. Hey, it's health coach Tara, and today we're going to talk about how to get started with the ketogenic diet in 10 easy steps. But first, in case you're new around here, make sure you subscribe to this channel. I upload new videos every week. Now let's dive in. Step number one, learn everything you can about eating keto. Now, many of my friends and clients who start keto, they jump right in without doing much research on what they can and can't eat. This leads to costly mistakes and slows weight loss and keto results. I don't want you to experience the frustration of not being able to get into ketosis because you didn't realize the package that says low carb prevented you from getting into ketosis or even reversed your state of ketosis. Therefore, your first step to success is to learn everything you can about keto. Watch videos, listen to podcasts, and read books on the subject. I'll link my favorite keto books in the description below, and you can find videos on all kinds of topics here right on this channel. Just make sure that you click the red subscribe button below, and that way you'll be notified every week when a new video is uploaded. Something fun I discovered just last week is that you can actually import my videos right into your podcast player. I personally use Podcast Addict. All that I had to do was put the URL that I wanted in the player and it pulled my videos right in. So if you're not a video fan and you want a podcast, check that out. Side question, do you think I should start a podcast? Let me know your thoughts in the comments below. Step number two, understand that all carbs aren't created equal. On a keto diet, we're eating approximately 65 to 75% fat, 15 to 20% protein, and 10 to 20% carbohydrates. But not all carbs are created equal. Now on the keto diet, all grains are off limits. Yes, all grains, corn, rice, wheat, barley, all of the grains, you don't eat them. Also off limits are starchy vegetables such as potatoes, sweet potatoes, yams, corn. Also, the majority of fruit is off limits. Exceptions to the fruit rule are berries, which are lower in carbs. Your very first trip to the grocery store when you're preparing to transition to a keto diet can be a little frustrating because a lot of the marketing on packaging is misleading. Just because the package says low carb doesn't mean it's a keto friendly food. So how do you tell? This brings us to step number three. Step number three, find places carbs are hiding in food. There are a number of places that carbs are hiding. Food additives are a huge culprit. So it's important not to just read the nutrition label, but also the ingredient list. Let's say that you're looking for a salad dressing that is keto friendly. You're pulling dressings off the shelf and most of them look pretty good. They say zero carbs, maybe one carb. So let's just pick on one brand and I just randomly chose this brand. Um, let's look at the Simply Ranch dressing by Hidden Valley. You can see that one serving, which is two tablespoons, has one gram of sugar. So let's zoom in on the label and take a peek at the ingredient list. So what do you see here that doesn't belong on a keto diet? Right away you see sugar, and the other one that doesn't belong is cornstarch. These two ingredients are ingredients we want to avoid if at all possible, especially for those of us who are gonna use more than two tablespoons of salad dressing on a big salad for lunch. Avoid foods with hidden ingredients, including maltodextrin, which is a food additive derived by, from corn. If you aren't sure about a food additive or something on the ingredient list, just do a quick Google search and see, is that ingredient derived from a grain? That's a great warning sign that it's a no-no. So a few tips, just a few foods to avoid that you may not think about right away and that catches some people out, me included. Soy sauce contains gluten, ketchup, barbecue sauce, often have a lot of added sugars or just naturally occurring sugars. Flavored coffee actually sometimes contains sugar as part of the flavoring packet. Baking powder generally contains cornstarch. If you can find one with arrowroot powder, that's a lot better option. I choose to make my own at home. 
And finally, Miracle Whip has a lot of added sugar, so use mayo instead. Watch for added sugars in cured meats such as sausage, bacon, and brats. Get the lowest sugar option possible. Step four, commit 100%, 100% to keto for four weeks. Begin the keto diet when you can be all in for four solid weeks. Take time to prepare in advance so you can hit the ground running and avoid as many obstacles as possible. Because the truth is, life is going to throw you a curveball. Obstacles are going to occur. So anticipate them and plan in advance. It's much less stressful and it gets you to success faster. Step five, be accountable to someone. The truth is, we become like the people that we surround ourselves with. Research shows that our habits, our health, and our weight are all heavily influenced by the people we are closest with. So create accountability for yourself by hiring a coach or joining a social support group. Find a partner to do keto with you, whether that's your spouse or a good friend or someone that you meet in a keto group who also needs an accountability partner. Speaking of keto groups, I invite you to join my free keto group that's on Facebook, where you'll find new people to connect with and hear from me regularly. You can find the link to join in the description right below this video. Now, we're gonna dive into the nitty gritty strategies you'll need to nail this new way of eating. Step six, get rid of temptation. You know those foods that are in your house that are the big temptations for you? Get rid of them. Remove them completely from your household. Now don't panic. Chances are there's a great keto option for your favorite foods. So this brings us right into your next point. Step seven, get comfortable in the kitchen. To be wildly successful on a keto diet, you'll sim simply substitute keto-friendly foods for those foods you're getting rid of. Love ice cream? Make keto ice cream. Love breakfast foods like waffles, cinnamon rolls, and pancakes? Make keto versions of these items. Love chips and dips? Again, make keto chips and a keto-friendly dip. Love appetizers, my husband's favorite, keto jalapeno poppers or a keto spinach artichoke dip. Commit to learning to cook the keto way and schedule time to cook each week. You can find recipes for most of the things I just mentioned right here on this channel. You can also connect with me on Pinterest, Instagram, Facebook, or even maybe a podcast. We prefer to batch cook on the weekends or if we have a free evening during the week. So what's batch cooking? Well, we make a large batch of a keto food. So for example, kind of our go-tos are keto nacho chips and keto waffles. We do this most weekends and we freeze these. Then we choose one or two keto meals to make in a large batch and freeze as well. Keeping our freezer full of quick keto options saves us when something comes up during the week. You know what's gonna happen. Step eight, familiarize yourself with keto options at restaurants. Going out with coworkers or friends no problem. Look at the menu in advance and figure out what you can order. A really popular option would be bunless burgers topped with bacon and cheese, maybe a side salad with creamy dressing such as blue cheese or Caesar. Or you can order a fatty cut of steak and a side of veggies, then smother those veggies in some extra butter. Almost every restaurant out there has some options if you're on a keto diet. I also request gluten-free with my order to make sure there aren't sauces or anything that contains gluten being added to my food because we don't eat gluten on a keto diet. Step nine, supplement, supplement, supplement. Yes, you need them. Experts agree that supplementing is key on a ketogenic diet, especially to avoid the keto flu and other symptoms that can occur if your body doesn't get the nutrients and minerals it needs. Think about your car. Would you attempt to drive your car without gas, oil, transmission fluid, power, steering fluid? What if you just had flat tires? Would you just go drive it around? Of course not. Our bodies need specific inputs, nutrients and minerals to run correctly. When we don't provide those inputs, the results are a wide variety of symptoms as our body continues to chug along without the stuff it needs. Supplementing correctly is critical to support your body's needs. Experts agree that you need to supplement with additional salt, magnesium, and potassium while on a ketogenic diet because of the changes that occur in your body. Check out the link in the description below for the homemade electrolyte drink that we personally drink at home. Many experts also recommend 
high quality digestive enzymes, probiotics, and omega-3s. Many of the products you'll find on store shelves are a waste of money because not all supplements are created equal. And there's not a lot of regulation on how bioavailable the ingredients in a specific supplement are to your body. So do your research in advance, know the company, and know that you can trust them and what is in their supplements. You'll find a list of supplements we personally take in the description below this video and in the corresponding blog post. Just a quick reminder here that I'm not a healthcare professional and this advice is not intended to diagnose, treat, or cure any disease. Always consult with a healthcare professional before making, making any changes to your diet or medication or supplements. This brings us to our final step. Step 10. Hydrate. We all know we should be drinking more water. Make sure you're getting at least half of your body weight in pure water each day. That means if you weigh 200 pounds, you should be drinking at least 100 ounces of water each day. This finishes up our 10 steps to starting a keto diet. I hope you found this helpful. Do you still have questions? Comment below and let me know what those questions are. Thanks so much for tuning in. If you haven't already, subscribe for notifications of my weekly recipe and vlog posts. Until next time.